Be one family. Welcome to Black Logic. Today for a ceremonial bill signing that restricts sports that transgender athletes can take part in. He was met with about 100 people at Texas Women's University protesting the Save Women's Sports Act. Fox 4's Dion Anglin was there. She joins us with more from Denton. Dion. Hi there, Clarice. Well, a bill signing along with two opposing views on legislation involving transgender athletes' participation in college women's sports. The law dubbed Save Women's Sports Act got a ceremonial stroke of the pen and strong reiteration for its origin by Governor Greg Abbott. Some women are being forced to play against biological men. The governor what? chose Texas Woman's University in Denton for the signing, flanked by women collegiate athletes and other supporters. This law prohibits biological men from competing on a team or as an individual against women in college sports. The supporters applaud Abbott's stand and even shared their reasons why. Riley Gaines, a former decorated collegiate swimmer from Texas, competed for the University of Kentucky in 2022 at the NCAA championships. She ended up in a tie with a transgender student from the University of Pennsylvania. Any amount of common sense, you can easily comprehend the fact that men on average, and this is a fact, are taller, stronger, more powerful, can jump higher than women. It's biological reality. But unfortunately, we live in such a time where it is somehow controversial to say men and women are different. Deep in the heart of Texas. Outside, a different story. Passionate protesters who oppose the new law, which takes effect in September, numbered in the hundreds. There are trans people fleeing Texas right now because of this type of legislation. Because of legislation across Texas, they are fleeing Texas, and it's wrong. He pretends to care about women's issues, but whenever it comes to abortion, he doesn't actually care. Whenever it comes to trans lives, he doesn't actually care. Yet he's using women's issues as a mask to discriminate against trans people. Abbott responded to the protests with some passion of his own while referring to college women at the top of their sports. They devoted their lives, working harder probably than anybody in this room, longer days, longer nights, sacrificing so much to achieve a goal, only to have that goal erased by being forced to compete against a man. Absolutely. That, that is absolutely one of the most important things to take away from this. As you see, the LGBT community is speaking out against this bill stating that it is divisive and that's why, you know, that's why people are essentially fleeing Texas. No, people are fleeing Texas because the governor is making legislation that is uh, prohibiting transgender men from competing against biological women. And I tell you that this is good. Oh shit. oh shit! Oh shit! The governor was joined by former NCAA athletes and spokeswoman for independent women's voice Riley Gaines and Paula Scanlon and a dozen other female athletes to celebrate this momentous law to protect the integrity of fair competition in women's sports in Texas. The governor Abbott sent a powerful message to Texas and to all Americans that we must protect the female category in sports if women and girls are to have equal athletic opportunities required by law. I'm so happy that Governor Abbott has taken the stance to protect women and girls sports and I'm proud to stand with him as we celebrate this legislation, said Scanlon. The Save Women's Sports Act is necessary in all states and I'm very thankful that Texas has taken steps to provide fairness and safety for female athletes. Senate Bill 15 prohibits a biological male from competing in a college level athletic competition designated for a biological female athlete to maintain competitive fairness. This bill also creates a mechanism for people to seek injunctive relief against a Texas public college or university or intercollegiate athlete team if it violates the provision of this bill, meaning that if you violate this bill of Texas law, that they can take you to court and essentially sue you for uh, violating this particular bill. And again, this is good. What we have to understand here, family, is that there has been an attack 
on biological men and biological women. And no woman should have to go and compete against a man because he decided, not based upon biology, but based upon his choice to be a female, which is his right. You can be whatever you want, but when it comes to athletics in college, come to athletic in school, then there should be a distinctive difference because scientifically proven, when it comes to muscle mass, good old muscle mass, men on average, they have 40% more muscle than women, 40% on average than women, which gives them a significant uh, advantage in strength when it comes to sports such as weightlifting and sprint and swimming and all other sorts of things. What about bone density? Men have 15% um, higher bone density than women. That makes them less likely to suffer injuries and stress fracture. So if you're competing against a man, a woman have to work three times, four times as hard and still may not even be able to compete. Like she stated, the man that she competed against when she was at Kentucky, on the male side, he was ranked 466. I believe his name was Will Johnson. He was ranked 466 in the nation on the male side. He came over and competed against a top female athlete, and he tied her. That is the major difference here. So, again, muscle mass and strength. Men, 40% more. Bone density, 15% more. When it comes to heart size and lung capacity, men have an average larger hearts and lungs than women that gives them the advantage in endurance sports such as running and as her sport was stating swimming so we have larger hearts larger lungs uh, you know higher bone density larger muscle mass and then what about testosterone because testosterone is a hormone that plays a role in muscle growth and strength in men on average 10 to 15 times more testosterone than women 10 to 15 times more and, of course, that gives them a major, major advantage in most sports. So these physical differences that male athletes are generally more likely to outperform female athletes in sports that, re that require strength, speed, and endurance. So, of course, there are some exceptionally uh, gifted females. There are some sports where female athletes can compete on equal terms with male athletes, such as gymnastics and figure skating because it's not really built on it's built on strength but you have these different categories you know what no no i can't do it i can't do it maybe figure skating M maybe B because it's more of skill but it still has to do with enduring and strength so i'm just gonna say absolutely not you know i was oh i almost turned the corner there family but i just can't do it i can't do it i can't do it because there is an agenda um, attack on our kids with a certain community and then there's an attack on women that because here's the thing do you see females trying to compete in male sports yeah yeah every now and again you guys may see um some sort of uh football uh female football player that's trying to kick field goals but she's not out there being the running back. She's not out there being the linebacker. Yeah, every now and again, Pop Warner League, you might get some uh, um, middle school leagues that a female might play. But when it comes to college, the only way you're going to see a female athlete on that field, she's kicking. She's not competing against those men who are three or four times her size, who has 40% more muscle mass, who have 15% higher bone density, who has 10 to 15 times more testosterone. That is not the case. B1.